All right, lesson nine, sprite movement. By combining the draw loop and the counter pattern, the class writes programs that move sprites across the screen, as well as animate other sprite properties. Okay, so watch this video either as a class or by yourself on your own, depending on what your teacher says. The counter pattern. Okay, this is crucial. You need to commit this to your memory. What is the counter pattern? This is a basic example. X equals X plus 1. Increasing or decreasing numbers is a common and incredibly useful pattern in programming. This counter pattern can be used to make an image fly across the screen, to count down a timer, or to keep track of clicks. Used with a variable x to count up by 1, the counter pattern can look like this. There's the example. Here are some examples of what happens when you use the counter pattern correctly. Every time this code is run, this code right here, it will take the current value of x and add 1 and save that as the new value of x. While this particular instance of the counter pattern uses addition, you could also use subtraction to count down. Movement with the counter pattern. So these are all examples, and let's take a look at the code used. So this is the example for the hippo. So let's find the hippo in here. I think they are referring to this blue guy, the hippo who's moving down and to the right of the screen. Hippo x equals hippo x plus 2. So that's making the hippo move to the right. Hippo y equals hippo dot y plus 2. That's making him move down to down. So the combination of down and to the right is why there are two lines of code for him. The rabbit is just moving down. So they're just going to be changing the y the y position of the rabbit and they do that with rabbit.y equals rabbit.y plus 2 and the pig is going left to right that's across the x-axis so that's pig.x equals pig.x plus 2. Other uses for the counter pattern so you can make it rotate constantly with sprite rotation equals sprite.rotation minus 1 or 2 whatever that is you can make it constantly get bigger, like sprite.scale equals sprite.scale plus 0.1. And this is morphing. So they are changing width equals width plus 1, height equals height minus 1, ellipse. Oh, so they are using, these are variables. Width is a variable, and they're putting that variable in here. Height is a variable, they're putting that height, height variable in there. Okay. I know this is complicated, but you're gonna you're gonna figure it out. I guarantee it. So the counter pattern. This pattern is one of the most important ones in all of programming. This is pretty cool, but it's also distracting, so I'm gonna turn it off. X equals x plus one. It is used to increase the value of a variable by one. You might call it the counter pattern since it can be used to make a variable that counts up. You'll see this pattern a lot, especially with the draw loop. Let's see what that looks like. Do this. Run the program, or this program creates a variable, counter. Okay, so this is the variable counter, and it's equal to zero, and then uses the counter pattern to make it count up. When you run the program, what do you think you'll see on the screen? Read the program and make a prediction of what the output will be. I already did that, unfortunately, but let's look. So the background's always gonna be white, the text size, counter, Ah, so the text size, they're referencing counter, the variable. And then the text, they put counter, so that's going to read zero. Counter equals counter plus one. So the text size is going to increase. And I don't know how the number displays. Oh, because it's the variable, right. So the text size is increasing because it's referencing counter. And the text is the number, and that's also increasing. Very cool. Sprite movement. 
Okay, so there's some, some stuff we got to do here. All right. Using the counter pattern, you can write programs that animate sprites smoothly. Adding to or removing from a sprite's X or Y property in the draw loop makes your sprite move just a bit each time it's redrawn. Do this. Make your program animate like the image to the right. We've already added a line to update, update plane.x in the draw loop, but it needs to be finished. Okay, so let's find the draw loop. Okay, here's the draw loop. Uh, plane.x equals... Okay, so they want us... Move the plane sprite one pixel to the right each time the draw loop is run. Okay, so notice we want the plane moving left to right. That's why they use plane.x. And the counter pattern means we will be putting plane.x plus 1. Okay, that's going to make it left to right. Yes, perfect. So if I made it minus 1, it's going to move to the left instead. Okay, just something to note. Let's change it back to plus 1. Okay, cool. So I guess I didn't really explain why it would move to the left if we did negative 1. If we do negative 1, it moves to the left because look at the x value. It's decreasing. So if we do plane.x equals plane.x minus 1, that's why it's moving to the left because it's decreasing its x value. Okay, moving to the left. Well, I guess this is going to explain that. If adding to a sprite's x coordinate makes it move to the right, how could you make it move to the left? Yes, I did just explain this. So, make your program animate like the image to the right. Update fly.x inside the draw loop so that in each frame the fly is drawn a little bit further to the left. Okay. Oh, uh, we gotta we gotta create the draw loop. Okay. Hmm. So I believe we will start here. So go into the variables drawer. And you're just going to add this. And we're going to say sprite. What's the name of the variable? Fly. So we're going to say fly.x equals fly.x minus 1. And if you click out here, that will turn into a block. Okay, and I think this should work. Yes, that worked. Okay, so read this program and predict which of the following animations will be produced. Okay, I want you to scroll through this and do this on your own because the answer is already highlighted. Diagonal movement. Updating only the X or Y properties of a sprite can only make it move straight up and down or left and right. If you want a sprite to move on a diagonal path, you'll need to update you'll need to update both of those properties. So if we think back to uh, this example, this hippo is moving diagonal, and that's because the x value is being uh, in a, used in a counter pattern, and the y value is also being used in a counter pattern. Okay, so this program currently makes the mouse move straight down the screen. Can you update it so that it moves diagonally across the screen like the image to the right? Uh, challenge, can you make the mouse point in the same direction as the image? Okay, so why isn't it moving? Okay, look at the draw pattern. It only has mouse.y being updated. We also want mouse.x to be updated. So let's use the coder's favorite uh, or best friend, which is copy and paste. And I'm going to highlight just this line of code. And I'm going to copy it and then click over here, hit enter on my keyboard, and I'm going to paste. But what do we have to change here? We have to change this Y to an X. X and click show blocks so we don't delete anything by accident and I think this should work yes okay but let's do the challenge now 
Can you make the mouse point in the same direction as the image? I'm pretty sure that they want us to use sprite.rotate. Uh, do we have to? Hmm. I don't think we would want that in the draw loop because I think if we put it in the draw loop, remember to put mouse here. If we put it in the draw loop, it might constantly rotate. I don't know. Let's put 10. Okay, it rotated a little bit. I think we might want to do negative, but let's not do negative 10. Let's do negative 45. Maybe it's ah perfect. Awesome. So I think that means 45 degree angle. Negative 45. Okay, and that wasn't a problem. Putting it in the draw loop isn't a problem. Debugging with watchers. Uh, you can read this, um, and we are going to be using it in this exercise, but I am not a fan of debugging using watchers. It's pretty confusing. So if you want to read this, go ahead. Yeah, and we're going to use it in this in this exercise, but I don't recall using it much before. So, watching the counter pattern. Watchers are a really useful tool for debugging programs that use the counter pattern. Read the program and predict what the program will do. Okay, uh, pan. I see all this pan. So, maybe a pale green pan will be constantly rotating. That's what I'm thinking. Yes. Oh, okay, the background is pale green. Oh, I should have read that. Background pale green. Okay, cool. Um, I'm not sure. See, I just don't understand what the watchers... Look at the watchers and explain to a neighbor what you are seeing. So the rotation is constantly increasing. Okay. Okay, I'm kind of... Okay, do notice that the pan dot rotation is constantly increasing. I am kind of thinking that this might be useful. Okay, debug, watching the counter pattern. Let's practice using watchers to debug your code. This program should move the motorcycle from the bottom left to the top right of the screen, like the image to the right. Okay, Okay, but it's not. It's starting over here and it's going down to the right. Uh, using the provided watchers for cycle.x and cycle.y, figure out which one is moving in the wrong direction and fix the problem. So. All right, let's look at our x and y coordinates down here, and let's trace the path that the motorcycle is supposed to move. So, okay, the x value is increasing, but the y value is decreasing. So are these numbers, the x value should be increasing, and it is. The y value should be decreasing, but it's not. It's increasing. So that means there's a problem with the code, with the y value. Okay, yes. Cycle.y equals cycle.y plus 10. We want to make that a negative. Okay, so I'm going to click show text. And I'm going to change this plus sign to a negative. And then I'm going to click show blocks. And I'm going to rerun this code. Perfect. Awesome. 